So NPS1 um, is formally known as three different diseases actually, Hurler, Hurler Shea, and Shea, because historically when they were first described, they had similar multisystemic features, but they differed in the impact on cognition and, um, and, and learning. And so before the discovery of the enzyme defect, uh, which was alpha l um they were categorized as different diseases, but after uh, biochemical and then ultimately genetic uh, confirmation, it's one disorder, one gene defect, but a spectrum of the disorder. So the Hurler, Hurler, Shea, and Shea spectrum typically differs based on the cognitive abilities, um, but the disease burden can still be just as great in all three forms. So MPS1 is an autosomal recessive disorder um, uh, that leads to, uh, the enzyme defect leads to the accumulation of heparin sulfate and dermatin sulfate, very similar to MPS2 or Hunter syndrome. And sometimes they might be indistinguishable. So the diagnostic workup for MPS disorders in general should really focus on looking at all the enzymes for fear that you might misdiagnose someone because you had a falsely low enzyme. You need to look at all the enzyme in the MPS disorders because some of them do overlap in their phenotypes. And, uh, and that was highlighted in one of my cases, in two of my cases actually. Um, so children were initially, um, in one scenario, the child had more of a behavioral um, difficulties, attention difficulties, impulsivity, and seemed to be on the autism spectrum. They were ultimately thought to have MPS due to some mild coarse facial features, uh, slight hepatosplenal megaly, recurrent ear infections. So the initial thought was one of the MPS disorders, and because the multisystemic disease burden wasn't so great, it was considered to be one of the San Filippo disorders. And so it wasn't until they did the entire panel of enzymes did they actually discover that it was um, uh, MPS2. And so that was important because at this point, MPS3 does not have any uh, therapy, and MPS2 does. And so it, that delay in diagnosis has led to this child now having some um, cardiac dysfunction, pulmonary function. So they lost several years of, um, of being on therapy. And that's one of the downsides to just trying to diagnose MPS disorders uh, based on their clinical symptoms alone. I think uh, for my colleagues who are not lysosomal storage disorder specialists or MPS specialists, um, the most that they should do is try to think about MPS as part of the differential and then allow um, their uh, a referral to genetics to, um, to explore all the, the varieties of MPS. It's too hard to distinguish sometimes the, which subtype it is without looking at all the enzymes. The second scenario, uh, a child again presented with learning difficulties and regression and some coarse facial features, recurrent ear infections, and some growth delay. Ultimately, had run a uh, enzyme for just MPS1, and that was low. Um, and so they went on to therapy. However, um, the child was doing worse from a systemic point of view. We didn't think it would treat the, the uh, cognitive abilities, but when I took over his care, um, there was a re uh, re-evaluation of all the enzymes. And although the alpha l hydronidase was slightly low, the um, hydronate 2 sulfatase was extremely low. And so in fact, the initial diagnosis of Hurler-Shea was in fact Hunter. And so that led to the wrong enzyme therapy. Again, so delay in, in treatment. Um, so it's important to highlight that for diagnosis of MPS, we typically look for the enzymatic deficiency, uh, but we run all the enzymes uh, due to the significant overlap in the phenotypes, and then uh, back that up with genetic confirmation.